In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory to the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the age of all ages, Amen. Today, the second Sunday of the first Coptic month of the Coptic New Year, the month of Tud. And on that Sunday, the church arranged to read the Gospel from St. Luke. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ on this passage. He is rejoicing in spirit. Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. And in many situations when we see the Lord Jesus Christ rejoice or weep or feel emotional, this refer to, to his humanity. And when the passage, it says, the Lord Jesus Christ rejoice in the spirit. It has also some stories that happen around and from these things and situations, we learn what will make the Lord Jesus Christ rejoice. How the Lord Jesus Christ will rejoice and what will make him rejoice. Three points about this in this passage only. The first one, the Lord Jesus Christ talking and he's praying and he's saying, I thank you, Father. And he, in this communication, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one God. But when he's talking on behalf of all humanity, of all of us, he is thanking the Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and reveal them to babes. The first thing rejo that rejoice the Lord Jesus Christ is the secrets of kingdom were revealed to those who are humble and simple, those who are like babes. And it was hidden from those who are feeling that they are wise knowing about themselves that they are prudent. <clears throat> and that's the first thing. The first thing, God will rejoice in the humble and simple, those who are children-like in their faith, those who have simple faith, those who are not complicating things, those who don't think about themselves that they are philosophers and they are wise, he will rejoice on those who are humble and simple. And when he referred to the babes, he referred to the disciples. And the apostles at that time, they came back after they preached in their, the whole world. And the disciples in that passage, they spread the kingdom of God, the word of God in the whole world. And that also rejoic rejoicing made the Lord Jesus Christ rejoice. Look at those babes, look at those who felt nothing about themselves, who were fishermen, and those who did not feel about themselves that they are wise. Now they spread the word of God in the whole world. And they are like babes in their faith, in their simplicity, in their humility, in their humbleness, in their innocence, in their holiness. They are like children. And those who were like, they were nothing, they considered themselves nothing, God rejoiced in them. St. Paul in his first epistle to Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 said, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. He chose them that they think about themselves or the world think about them that they are foolish to put to shame those who are feeling that they are wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Those who feel they are mighty, he chose those who feel that about themselves that they are weak. And that's God's way of rejoicing in those who are humble and simple. St. Mary in her praise, she realized and she knows the quality of God. 
In her praise, she said, he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. This is a quality of the Lord. And that's the first thing God will rejoice. He will rejoice in those who feel about themselves babes and humble. The second thing, right before this passage, we read part about the disciples showing their success and their mission when they return back and they were talking about their service and their mission to the Lord and they are reporting to him, telling him, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus told them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And he told them, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that's also something that made the Lord rejoice. Satan now is under the subject. Serpents and scorpions, they are trampled. And the disciples now, they can cast out demons, but not only by this gift of casting out demons, but also by fighting all the temptation of Satan. Satan did not like for the word of God to be spread. And he attacked it in all his effort. But when they reported that even the demons were subject to us, even the power of the, that enemy were subject to us, this rejoiced the Lord. Because now they understand. They understand that his kingdom is spiritual. And our, our role and our responsibility is also to fight against the demon. And that's also the message that we read in the, the Pauline epistle today. In the Pauline epistle, St. Paul is telling everyone like, to endure the hardship as a good soldier. Everyone is called to be a good soldier. And in our hardship, against the demons, we will be tempted and we will have lots of temptation. But we are called to, we are called also to fight back. And he's telling you, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Every one of us was called to, to be a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, the Satan and devils will also entangle ourselves. So be careful, we're not to be entangled ourselves with the affairs of this life so that we can commit to this call. The third thing that the Lord rejoiced today when he pointed and he privately told his disciple, he turned to his disciples and he privately told them, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Blessed are you. Blessed is every one of those who are disciples because now they see the Lord Jesus Christ, they hear him, and the Lord Jesus Christ was prophesied by the prophets, and many of these prophets wanted to see him, many wanted to hear him, they could not, but the disciples are blessed because they see him and they hear him. And that's why the church chose this verse to pray it in the litany of gospel before the reading of the gospel when Abuna prayed and he would say, blessed are you. Blessed are you for you, you see also things that are not that the prophets and kings wanted to see and you hear those who wanted also to hear but they could not hear or see. And that's what we hear when we hear the gospel when we hear the scripture, the word of God, 
And that's what we see in, on the altar, Christ himself on the altar, when we take the communion, eat his body and drink his blood. In the fracture prayer, Abuna would emphasize on this when he said, Behold, today, Emmanuel, Christ, our God, is with us on this table. Today, is, he is with us on this table. And that's also another thing, rejoice the Lord. Blessings for all those who couldn't see and hear, now they see and hear. And we are not only seeing him on the altar and hearing him and his word, but we also unite with him. We eat him, we eat his body and drink his blood. And this unity will rejoice the Lord. We see how the Lord point to those three things, how he's rejoicing, because that secret of kingdom, salvation, now is revealed to those who are humble and simple, like babes, like the disciples and the believers who followed them. And how he gave them the authority over the devil and how he gave everyone also to trample scorpion and demon. And he calls us to be soldiers for him to fight the devil and strive, as St. Paul said, the hardship as a good soldier. And he also rejoiced because those who could not see him and hear him now, they are able to see him and hear him. And blessed are those who can see him and hear him. Glory be to him forever and ever. Amen.